So Jacob set out for Egypt with all his possessions, and when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am God, the voice said, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will see to it that you become a great nation there. I will go with you down to Egypt. I will bring your descendants back again. But you will die in Egypt with Joseph at your side. So Jacob left Beersheba and his sons brought him to Egypt. They carried their little ones and wives in the wagons Pharaoh had provided for them. They brought their livestock too in all the belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Jacob, his entire family, arrived in Egypt sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters, all his descendants. These are the names of Israelites, the descendants of Jacob, who went with him to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's oldest son. The sons of Reuben were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simon were Jemul, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Saul. Saul's mother was a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Gohath, and Mirari. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamel. The sons of Ishar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimaron. The sons of Zebulun were Sir, Elon, and Jali. These are the sons of Jacob who were born to Leah and Padaram, along with their sister Dina. In all Jacob's descendants, though Leah numbered 33. Sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggi, Shuni, Esbon, Uri, Radi, and Erli. And the sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Berai. Their sister had named Sari Bera's son, where Heber and Malkiel. These sixteen were descendants of Jacob through Zipha, the servant given to Leah by her father Laban. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph's sons, born in the land of Egypt, were Manas Manaseth and Ephraim. Their mother was Ashnath, daughter of Potiphar, Phura, priest of Helipolis. Benjamin's sons were Bela, Beaker, Ashbel, Gira, Naman, Ehi, <laughs> Rosh, Mupim, Mupim, Huppim, and Ard. These 14 were the descendants of Jacob and his wife Rachel. I bet the angels are all around just laughing at me. I can't say these names, so sorry. The son of Don was Hushim. The son of Naphtali were Jazil, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam. These seven were the descendants of Jacob through Bilam, the servant given to Rachel by her father Laban. So the total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went with him to Egypt, not counting his sons' wives, was 66. Joseph also had two sons who had been born in Egypt. So altogether, there were 70 members of Jacob's family in the land of Egypt. Jacob sent Judah on ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the land of Goshen. And when they all arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariots and traveled to Goshen to meet his father. As soon as Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept on his shoulder for a long time. Then Jacob said to Joseph, Now let me die, for I have seen you with my own eyes and know you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and to all his households, I'll go and tell Pharaoh that you have all come from the land of Canaan to join me. And I will tell him, these men are shepherds and livestock breeders. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own. So when Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, tell him, we have been livestock breeders from our youth as our ancestors have been 
for many generations. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the land of Goshen, for shepherds are despised in the land of Egypt. So Joseph went to Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers are here from Canaan. They came with all their flocks and herds and possessions, and they are now in the land of Goshen. Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked them, What is your occupation? And they replied, We are shepherds like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt, for there is no pasture for our flocks in Canaan. The famine is very severe there. We request permission to live in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your family has joined you here, choose any place you like for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt. The land of Goshen will be fine. And if any of them have special skills, put them in charge of my life, livestock too. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How old are you? Pharaoh asked him. Jacob replied, I have lived for a hundred and thirty hard years. But I am still not nearly as old as many of my ancestors. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh again before he left. So Joseph assigned the best land of Egypt, the land of Ramez. Ramez says. So Joseph assigned the best land of Egypt, the land of Ramesses, to his father and brothers, just as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph furnished food to his father and brothers in amounts appropriate to the number of their dependents. Meanwhile, the famine became worse and worse, and the crops continued to fail throughout Egypt and Canaan. Joseph collected all the money in Egypt and Canaan in exchange for grain. And he brought the money to Pharaoh's treasury house. When the people of Egypt and Canaan ran out of money, they came to Joseph crying again for food. Our money is gone, they said, but give us bread. Why should we die? Well then, Joseph replied, since your money is gone, give me your livestock. I will give you food in exchange. So they gave their livestock to Joseph in exchange for food. Soon all the horses, flocks, herds, and donkeys of Egypt were in Pharaoh's possession. But at least they were able to purchase food for that year. Next year, they came again and said, Our money is gone and our livestock are yours. We have nothing left but our bodies and land. Why should we die before your very eyes? Buy us our land in exchange for food. We will then become servants to Pharaoh. Just give us grain so that our lives may be saved and so the land will not become empty and desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. All the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was so severe, and their land had become Pharaoh's. Thus all the people of Egypt became servants to Pharaoh. The only land he didn't buy was that belonging to the priest, for they were assigned food for Pharaoh and didn't need to sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, See, I have bought you and your land for Pharaoh. I will provide you with seed so you can plant the fields. And when you harvest it, a fifth of your crop will belong to Pharaoh. Keep four fifths for yourself and use it to plant the next year's crop and feed yourselves, your households, and your little ones. You have saved our lives, they exclaimed. May it please you, sir, to let us be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph then made it a law throughout the land of Egypt, and it is still the law. Pharaoh should receive one-fifth of all the crops grown on his land. But since Pharaoh had not taken over the priest's land, they were exempt from this payment. So the people of Israel settled in the land of Goshen in Egypt. And before long, they began to prosper there, and their population grew rapidly. Jacob lived for 70 years after his arrival in Egypt. So he was 147 years old when he died. As the time of his death drew near, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, If you are pleased with me, swear most solemnly that you will honor this, my last request. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I am dead, take me out of Egypt and bury me beside my ancestors. So Joseph promised that he would. Swear that you will do it, Jacob insisted. So Joseph gave his oath, and Jacob bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. 
And that is the end of 47. May y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.